Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today I want to talk to you guys about the one statement that customers use, that buyers use, procurement professionals use, the one statement they use that immediately puts a salesperson on the defensive. And that is, your price is too high. And that immediately makes the salesperson uh, react to the situation instead of kind of exerting control. Um, and it's a way for the customer to take control of the situation. The moment they say your price is too high, a lot of salespeople think that it's implied that all they have to do is reduce the price and they'll get a sale. But the customer's not actually saying that. So what is the customer actually saying when he says, your price is too high? Because he's not promising to buy anything, he's just saying your price is too high. And I'm not trying to be facetious with that question, but when you take a step back and you look at it, the customer's concern is a concern that's rooted in increasing costs. Okay? And if you're a business owner, you know how hard it is to be competitive in today's global marketplace when costs are increasing. It affects profit, it, you know, it may, might mean the, biz, uh, the difference between business won and lost. So nobody wants to see costs increase. So when your customer is concerned about price, what they're saying is, you're raising my costs. So what we need to do is we need to get your customer away from a concern about price and onto ways that your company can reduce their costs without lowering the price of your product. So I'm going to give you five or six areas that you can focus on. First one, cost per use. Okay? So what is cost per use? When you think about cost per use, think about longevity of product. Okay? If you have a product that lasts longer than your competition, then it really doesn't matter how much more expensive your product is. If it lasts 20 or 30% longer, then your customer is going to save. So cost per use strategies are one way to get your customer to understand, hey, listen, Mr. Customer, I know what you're saying when it comes to prices, okay? What you're really saying is you're concerned about costs. This product is actually going to save you money. So cost per use strategies. How are you going to save your customer money, okay? What does that 20 to 30% increase in performance mean in terms of savings? How do you do it? How do you put that in a dollar value where your customer can appreciate it, okay? Number one. Number two, quality, okay? Now quality could be linked to cost per use and maybe you can use them both at the same time. But at the end of the day, people will pay a higher price for something uh, if they see that there is a value to the purchase. And in a lot of cases, your customer may be saying, you know, your price is too high. But in reality, he's buying a product or something or a service from somebody else, and it's not meeting his expectations. So he may just be saying your price is too high, but he may have no problem buying from you uh, once you expose the fact that what he's currently buying is not meeting his needs. Okay, so quality is important. The third thing you want to look at is increased yield. Okay, increased yield or slash performance. Okay, and what you want to focus around is reduced defects. Defects or slash issues. Now, what I mean by this is, let's say you're a material supplier, you're providing material, and your material is better than your competitor's material. Well, perhaps that material means that your, your, your customer is going to have stronger performance of that material. He's going to have improved, improved yield in terms of his production throughput as a manufacturer. Okay? So that's kind of similar to cost per use, but you've got to put it into a dollar value figure. So how do you do that? How do you justify that price? The fourth thing I want you to look at is the cost of freight. Okay? Now this is kind of unique, but what, 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 a lot of times what happens is you may have a certain geographical area that you sell into. Okay, let's say that your customers, let's say that your, 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 your freight terms are FOB, your plant. Your customer has to pay for freight. They have to pay for freight to pick it up at your plant and deliver it to their own facility. But let's say that you ship a lot of products or you purchase a lot of products from a, an area where that customer is located. If you have better freight terms, you may be able to help your customer reduce theirs by them piggybacking on your freight or you getting them a better freight rate. Okay, so that, that's one way of doing it. Okay? The fifth way is vendor managed inventory, VMI. Okay? So these are big con consignment agreements. Okay? Blanket orders. Blanket orders are a way for you to offer maybe a lower price provided you get volume in return. But vendor managed, agree vendor -managed inventory agreements are a fantastic tool to maintain your pricing. Um, because what you're doing is, you're, in consignment inventory, you're basically shipping down a larger volume of product uh, where you can ship 
a larger volume of product to your customer's facility, reduce your cost of freight, they can reduce their cost of freight on incoming parts, uh, and they only get invoiced for the amount of material or products that they use in a given month that they use it. Okay? That's another way. A sixth way is a loss leader strategy. Now, you think about loss leader, think about uh, Sony, PS2, PS3, PS4, Xbox, Xbox One, all these guys. Every single console they sell, they lose money. But their focus is not to make money on the consoles. Their focus is to make money on the software and on the games, obviously. Okay? So a loss leader strategy is you may be able to provide your customer with something that they can't get from somebody else, and it may mean nothing to you, and it may be such a low cost that you can throw it in as an extra. Now, this is just, these are just five examples of how you can get your customer away from their concern about price and onto ways that your company can help them reduce costs. But this list could go on and on and on. And a great example, um, or a great exercise for you guys, is to come up with your own list of ways that you can save your customer money and reduce their costs without touching the price of your product. So that's it. Don't react to this, your price is too high, without understanding how you can help your customer reduce their costs. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.